I would like first to offer some general guidelines for Om choirs around the world, followed by the words of Sri Aurobindo and the mother on Om, and then to share some of the experiences of various members of the Om choirs, and lastly to speak of lines I quote each week before we begin each Om often from Savitri, but also from the writings of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother, to help raise our consciousness to its highest heights. In the future, I will also read excerpts from Sri Ramakrishna, Swami Vivekananda, and others on Om, also from the Upanishads. We will have a session of recorded exercises for Aum choirs preparatory to singing and receiving the new music. Mother gave us no road map of the new music, no instruction manual, but told us to sit in a circle and have no preconceived ideas of what might come down. As a frequent and intensive reading of Savitri, can lead us to the overhead influence in the work of other poets. So too, a deep and concentrated listening to music can sometimes reveal strains of the descent of the new music. Here is a portion of a letter from Ami, who is at the East-West Cultural Center in Los Angeles, a center devoted to the mother in Sri Aurobindo founded by Dr. Judith Tyberg, who was named Jyoti Priya by Sri Aurobindo. And he writes, Mother said, there is a new music just above the head, waiting to come down, and it is looking for the right instruments, meaning people, to bring it down. She told us to begin singing but with no preconceived ideas about how it would manifest. She also asked us not to use any instruments, just voices. We would sit in a circle. There were no words. One person would start singing, another would add something, and so forth. We experimented like this for a long time. And he also writes, it is a very wonderful thing that you have revived this activity that was encouraged so strongly by Mother more than 30 years back. The difficulty, as is often the case, is in the mind. No matter how high the inspiration of the greatest composers of earlier times, be it Bach, Beethoven, Mozart, or Sunil, we must take great care not to allow the mind to fall into already established patterns and repeat the music of the past, but open to that which is seeking to descend and establish itself on earth and in us. Mother gave us the seed sounds in her music, and Sunil took those up expanding on those powerful melodies and gave us a new music. Now the own choir takes another step with the human voice alone to be a collective instrument for the music to descend through us. The tendency towards harmonic resolution is very strong and may be a greater sign of the aspiration for human unity than the thousands of books and treatises written on the subject in the long history of the race. We have heard on many occasions, even when the own choir had nearly 50 or 60 or 70 or up to 100 people in attendance, that all dissonances, beautiful though they might be, tended towards harmonic resolution. 
a collective soaring of note, building upon note, chord upon chord, not unlike the architecture of the temples of India. Yet, even in the dissonances, there was an underlying harmony. Composed music is fixed unless improvisation is indicated. The music of the own choir is fluid, ever-changing, as voice after voice opens to the divine melodies and harmonies above the head, especially moving are the voices of young adults with their purity of tone, blending with the richness of sound of elder sadaks and sadikas, many of whom sang to mother many years ago and continue their music today. Especially important to me is to have the children join us. And we have seen recently children from the ages of three to six singing the Om with such intensity and concentration. They are our future and should be welcomed into all Om choirs. We begin by humming so there can be no straining or injury to the vocal cords. And I will discuss more about this in the future. Humming also helps with the essential work of blending and uniting us as one sound. We work on the various parts of the body that are involved in singing, the position of the tongue, the jaw, proper use of the diaphragm, and correct breathing so that there is no strain in the upper body. In the exercises DVD, we will go into each part of the body consciousness and how we train it as singers. I believe the most important realization of all own choirs is to recognize that we are one body, one holy body, called to earth at this time to help bring down the new music of transformation in us and to heal and transform the earth. Although I have often said this in the own choirs, I would like it to be on record today that in 1979, on my birthday, I went to Nolini, and I spoke to Nolini. I had sent him a letter, actually a two-page letter, single-spaced, on the difficulties Oroville was facing. And he answered that letter in detail. To make a long story short, he became very quiet. And then he pointed to my wife, Mary Helen, and he said, your body then he pointed to me and he said, and your body. And then he pointed to himself and said, and my body. We think they are different bodies. They are not. They are all her body. She has put a part of herself into each of us, truly. One day, I pray that there will be home choirs throughout the world and we shall know the power of Om and its ability to transform. In the Om choir there are no wrong notes, but we must go deeper and deeper to open to the descent of the new music. All are welcome, even those who have no voice or have difficulty hearing or reproducing a note. Formally, I was very strict and allowed only those who could sing and wanted to help bring down the new music. But now, Mother has widened me and the own choir is open even to those who would like to sit in silence in its atmosphere and be immersed in the beauty and the power of the descent of the new music. The Om Choir is not 
a venue for singers to show off the beauty of their voice or to show how loud they can sing. The Om Choir is a collective prayer that these sacred bodies called by the divine to play a role in the creation of the new world may be used as instruments for the divine to send down the new music. For Om has the power of effectuation and can heal and transform and infuse the cells of the body with the new light and through the body into the earth. The new music is not a music of the East or West. And difficult though it may be, especially for musicians, we must break the mental modes of judgment of good or bad, dissonant or discordant, to allow the new music to sing us. I often say that through the centuries, music has been composed to the divine. Sing a new song to the divine. So many psalms and choral arrangements have been done. The own choir is different. We are not singing to the divine. We are instruments to receive the transformative music from the divine through our human bodies. The mind has no capacity to judge the new music. And only the divine can know the sincerity of our collective aspiration. Even when we hear strong dissonances, they are only preparing the possibility of a greater harmony. In each Om, we sing something and a new sound descends. So both the mind and the ego must be left outside the door. Focus, deep inner concentration, awareness of the soul to your right and to your left, and then extending your consciousness to include all assembled in the Om choir is the best way to achieve the deeper listening. We sing three ohms seated and the last ohm standing. When the body is in the most receptive position. Lastly, what has come to me is the necessity of the inner listening so that we may realize the unity that already is. This and the fact that I have experienced that the human soul always moves towards harmony. For more information on the new music, please visit the website sriarabindoashram.info where you can read a series of articles I have written over many years. Sri Aurobindo on all. He writes in volume 12, The word has its seed sounds, suggesting the eternal syllable of the Veda, Om. He spells it A-U-M. But in every other book, in all his other works, he spells it O-M. I found that interesting. Then he writes a note on the Chandogya Upanishad. Om is the syllable, and then in parentheses, the imperishable. One should follow after it as the upward song, parentheses again, movement. For with Om, one sings, parentheses, goes upwards. The Chandogya is to be a work in the right and perfect way of devoting oneself to the Brahman. Its subject is the Brahman, but the Brahman has symbolized in the Om, the sacred syllable of the Veda, not therefore the pure state of existence only, but that existence in all its parts. Om 
is the symbol and the thing symbolized in volume 13 of the collected works he writes the basic syllable om which is the foundation of all the perfect creative sounds of the revealed word om is the one universal formulation of the energy of sound and speech that which contains and sums up synthesizes and releases all the spiritual power and all the potentiality of Vak speech the goddess speech and Shabda sound vibration word. Again, in volume 13, Sri Aurobindo writes, the mantra of the divine consciousness brings its light of revelation. The mantra of the divine power, its will of effectuation. The mantra of the divine ananda is equal fulfillment of the spiritual delight of existence. All word and thought are an outflowing of the great Om. Om, the word, the eternal, manifest in the forms of sensible objects, manifest in that conscious play of creative self-conception of which forms and objects are the figures, manifest behind in the self-gathered, superconscient power of the infinite. Om is the sovereign source, seed, womb of thing and idea, form and name. It is itself, integrally, the supreme intangible the original unity, the timeless mystery, self-existent above all manifestation in supernal being. Om is the symbol of the triple Brahman, the outward looking, the inward of subtle and superconscious causal Purusha, conscious being person. Volume 23. Om is the mantra, the expressive sound symbol of the Brahman consciousness. In its four domains, from the Turiya, the superconscious, the absolute, to the external or material plane, the function of a mantra is to create vibrations in the inner consciousness that will prepare it for the realization of what the mantra symbolizes and is supposed indeed to carry within itself. The mantra Om should therefore lead towards the opening of the consciousness to the sight and feeling of the one consciousness in all material things in the inner being and in the superphysical world, in the causal plane above, above now superconscious to us, and finally the supreme liberated transcendence above all cosmic existence. And in volume 24, describing someone's vision in the triple transformation. Sri Aurobindo writes, Om, and in parentheses, golden, rising to the sky, means the cosmic consciousness supermentalized and rising towards the transcendent consciousness. A friend some weeks ago did a very extensive search and sent to me all he could find on what Mother had said about Om. In India's languages, 
they have this Om, which is a marvel. You know what they say? That Om is the totality of the sounds of the creation perceived by the Supreme. He hears Om as a call to him, as an idea. It's magnificent, as a symbol, as a only... And then the disciple says, and a power, not only as a symbol, but as a power. And Mother says, oh, a tremendous power, tremendous. The first time I heard it, the first time I heard it, there was a certain Bernard, who had spent a year in India, in the Himalayas. And he was visited by yogis whom he didn't know. He lived in a hut in the Himalayas all alone. One yogi came to him. He didn't say anything. He just sat by his side and then left. And that yogi simply told him, Home. Then he came back to France, recounted his experiences in India, and he said that. Me, I knew absolutely nothing of India at that time. And when he uttered the word Om, Mother brings her arms down. It came a force like this. My whole entire body, everything vibrated in an extraordinary way. It was like a revelation. Everything, but everything started vibrating. Then I said, at last, here's the true sound. Yet I knew nothing, absolutely nothing. Neither what it meant nor anything. Another time, Mother continues. I made an experiment writing the letter O. When you have written it four, five, six times, it becomes excellent. I wanted to know why you were asked to do that work and what you could draw from it. So I sat down to write your yantram, and it became very living. I could see it in front of me. I kept seeing it all the while. But then I thought, the very fact of writing must have an effect. Then I started writing the letter OM carefully. Well, when I came to the fourth, the fifth, it became excellent, excellent, as though it were creating a vibration. That's the power it has, an external power. But then it was very amusing, parentheses, the body is like a child, really a child. Suddenly it said, oh, what a lovely game to be sitting like this and writing. Oh, how amusing. If I had the time, it would be great fun to write and write lots and lots of times. I saw that in the body, in the body's cells. Then I understood. And another time, mother, There is one sound which, to me, has an extraordinary power. Extraordinary and universal. That's the important point. It doesn't depend on the language you speak. It doesn't depend on the education you were given. It doesn't depend on the atmosphere you breathe. And that sound, without knowing anything, I used to say it when I was a child. You know how in French we say, oh, well, I used to say, om, without knowing anything. And indeed, I made all kinds of experiments with that sound. It's fantastic, even fantastic. It's unbelievable. And at another time, naturally, men make it difficult, parentheses. I think they must love difficulties because, end parentheses. With everything, the smallest thing, there's always a world of difficulties. So you spend your time saying, quiet, 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 be quiet. Even the body 
lives in difficulties. It too seems to love them. But all of a sudden, the cells chant their own spontaneously. Then there is a sort of childlike joy in all those cells. They say, parentheses, in a tone of wonder, in parentheses, oh really, we can do that? We are allowed to do that? It's touching. And the result is immediate, that great, peaceful, all-powerful vibration. Mother continues another time. A mantra given by the guru is only the power to realize the experience of the discoverer of the mantra. The power is automatically there because the sound contains the experience. I saw that once in Paris at a time when I knew nothing of India, absolutely nothing, only the usual nonsense. I didn't even know what a mantra was. I had gone to a lecture given by some fellow who was supposed to have practiced, quotes, yoga for a year in the Himalayas and recounted his experience. None too interesting either, in parentheses. All at once, in the course of his lecture, he uttered the sound Om, and I saw the entire room suddenly fill with light, a golden, vibrating light. I was probably the only one to notice it. I said to myself, well, then I didn't give it any more thought. I forgot about the story. But as it happened, the experience recurred in two or three different countries with different people. And every time there was the sound OM, I would suddenly see the place filled with that same light. So I understood. That sound contains the vibrations of thousands and thousands of years of spiritual aspiration. There is in it the entire aspiration of men towards the Supreme. And the power is automatically there because the experience is there. And again, at another time. Naturally, if there's also an awareness of the idea behind it, if one does japa as a very active conscious invocation, then its effects are greatly multiplied. But the basis is the magic of sound. This is a fact of experience, and it's absolutely true. The sound OM, for instance, awakens very special vibrations. There are other sounds as well, but of course that one is the most powerful of all. It is an attempt to divinize material substance. From another almost identical point of view, it fills the physical atmosphere with the divine presence. So time spent in Japa is time consecrated to helping the material substance enter into more intimate rapport with the divine. Then Mother said to another disciple, each verse of Savitri is like a revealed mantra which surpasses all that man possesses by way of knowledge. And I repeat this, the words are expressed and arranged in such a manner that the sonority of the rhythm leads you to the origin of sound, which is all. Mother writes again, or rather speaks to a disciple. With the help of Om, one can realize the divine. Om has a transforming power. Om represents the divine. The sound, 
They say that all the aspirations of the world when going towards the divine make oh like that. The mother chants the word. And then that is why they say all. There was a Frenchman who came back from the Himalayas who had stayed there some time and he gave a lecture. And I listened to the lecture and in the lecture he said that when he was deep in the Himalayas there was a sannyasin whom he didn't know who came to see him and told him only this, all, and that he was completely changed. And then when he said Om, when he said Om, I felt the same change in me, as if the divine was coming in. Om, Om, it must be manifested. If anything goes wrong, repeat Om, all will go well. This was published in Ananda Sagar, January 2010, entitled Om Chanting from My Treasures by Shobha Mitra. In one of the first December programs, the mother selected four of us to recite Sri Aurobindo's poem, The Ascent and the Descent. She would direct us individually after coming back from the tennis crowd. One day, being deeply moved by her formidable voice, I asked the mother, Mother, teach me how to chant Om. The mother became quite upright, closed her eyes, and started chanting Om. My words cannot express the experience I had at that time. It was magnificent. I wish we had some facility to record both her recitation and own chanting. The mother kept silent for a little while and then started speaking. Mother, choose an open space like the open sky or sit in front of the sea and chant Om as I have shown you. If you do it sincerely, it will certainly widen your consciousness. You will find a vaster, wider consciousness growing in you. She said on another occasion, whenever you are ill or you are attacked by some unpleasant element which you want to get rid of, chant Om. It will disappear. You will find so much peace. On one of my birthdays, I asked, Mother, how to go within? Mother, Ah, I have spoken about it many times. She keeps silent for a very long time, as if in trance, then speaks again. Mother, Put your body in a comfortable position and start chanting all. You will find that you are before a tunnel, a long, narrow tunnel. Go on chanting, go on chanting intensely, wholeheartedly. You will find that the tunnel slowly getting illumined. Go on, go on doing it as often as possible. You will find one day that you have come to the end of the tunnel and at the core of your heart where the Lord is. It is a long process, but you are sure to arrive at it if you are sincere. Lastly, from the Supreme Discovery by Mother. Beautiful, doubtless, was the song of the primordial sphere rocked on the bosom of immensity. But how much more beautiful and triumphal is the symphony of the constellations, the music of the spheres, the immense chorale filling the heavens with an eternal hymn of victory.